All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Kings of the Storm 2. We're actually going into game number three of our first semifinal here between Symbiote Gaming and GGBB. We had a really solid game, game two. I honestly thought GGBB was going to take it, but they stepped a little bit too far forward. You know why? It's because you gave them your blessing. Because I gave them the curse. I gave them the curse, the caster's curse. You, as soon as you root for someone and you say they're going to they're gonna make this happen, it's the caster's curse. Well, we have the draft ready for game number three, and we're going to hop right on over to the draft. And we have Matt t walk us through. Who's going to be banning first here? We're going to have uh, SMG is going to be banning first again. So the, the process is whenever you lose, you get to choose if you want first pick or... Um, yes. You get to choose if you want first pick or second pick. And GGBB has op uh, opted to have second pick. What you'll also notice on the map at the... Or in the view that you're seeing right now, is we're having a run back game. They're bringing it back. They said, hey, we almost had you on Cursed Hollow, or excuse me, Haunted Mines. We know we can beat you on Haunted Mines. So they brought it back. Dave's stupid rule permits that you can bring anyone back, or excuse me, just the ruling in general, right. states that you can bring anyone back to a map that you have not won on yet. Correct. We have rapid fire bands now. Band Tyrael, Band Tass. Boom, boom, getting those out of the way. They don't want to deal with them this time. Stitches still open. So very interesting there. Yes. Um, SMG obviously had a tough time with it last game, but you know what they're saying? Okay, we're, we're, we're ready. We'll, we'll respond to it this time. We'll do everything that we, we didn't do last time. We'll do better this time. Yeah, and no surprise here. Dreadnought immediately grabbing up Arthas. We've seen that three games in a row now, the immediate pickup on Arthas. This is almost an exact run back. Look at this. Yeah, wow. I, I this like this. Just bang, I bang. like this. Just like bang, bang. We know what we're doing. We know what you're doing. We might see a few differences I want, here. I want to see Arth pick Nova. I want to see Nova on SMG this game. You know, while we're in the lobby here, I'm actually going to take... Boom! No. Wow, he, he called that. You you called that. Well, I'm going to actually change my settings right here in the game. I'm going to lower the graphics a little bit so we don't have the issue once again on Haunted Minds. We're going to put it on high, uh, hopefully for a better experience. You can probably just turn to the lighting because the lighting was what blew up everything. Yeah, well, I'm going to play it safe okay. and um, okay. put everything on high. All right. Hopefully this doesn't blow anything up. All right, we're good. Now, as the draft continues, like we said, we saw Tychus and Nova. So we have Tychus, Nova, and Arthas. Well, we're seeing some characters be flipped around here. So the reason why I wanted to see Nova on SMG is obviously the first to deny GGBB from having it. Clearly, they've been, they've been getting into a groove with it. They've played it a couple of times today. We've seen it a couple of times. And they they hit their stride last game, I think. Like, Dunk, he was he was doing what he needed to do. He was hitting his shots. He was doing whatever whatever he thought needed to happen. He was doing it. But uh. the biggest thing that was really offsetting it was if a pick happened from Stitches. If a pick happened, then Dunk was able to set up and do the initial damage to offset any kind of healing. And then the the preceding damage that followed it just it just wasn't it was too yeah, yeah yeah and so they were able to get those picks constantly and now they're like okay you know what no more crippling shot no more high damage burst that's gonna be on our side now if you pick Arthas good luck uh, if you actually get a pick on Arthas rather good luck trying to kill him we're gonna take away your high burst and I know that you're happy about seeing this so what do you see well we got Vala Zagara picked up here I mean I like this reaction to have Zagara on their side of the map because that's one thing that in the early game it seemed like something they could really use to have that push. And you cannot ignore Zagara's damage. You have to respect his damage. We saw that one push where where we saw them mo you know moving on in with Zagara and they lost three players giving putting SMG back in the game more or less to a Zagara. But we actually have, we have a new Barak Barak and Malfurion. So okay. Okay. I'm excited. All right. Are you hyped? Straight up. I'm hyped. Anubarak and, and Dreadnought. Dreadnought is abandoning Arthas, giving it to Soldier, and say, I, I mean, we've never seen Dreadnought play on Anubarak here in a competitive match. No. So um, obviously he likes the hero. Yeah. And obviously they, they, they think they're like, all right, we're going to do this hyper lockdown. We're going to stun, stun, root. And Nova is going to delete someone. I mean, obviously we don't know uh, who they're... We don't have their fifth yet, do we? I, I really dislike not being able to see the center person here. I really, I really genuinely do. But it is For again Alpha. Uh, yes. We have Malfurion. It's uh, Tychus. It's Tychus. That's who it was. Tychus. Excuse me. I did forget there. Um, 
Well, on the opposing side of things, I mean, we do have Uther, Stitch, Zagara, but we're going to see what they do to fill out the rest of their roster. So I like the pickup of a noob here because um, GGBB is theoretically lacking burst damage. So what can happen if, say, an Arthas gets picked, or if pretty much anyone but a noob gets picked, if that happens, a noob can tunnel over, he can burrow strike over, and then web wrap Vala. Wow. That's actually a really good point. I didn't think about that. And you just effectively just keep you just, her out of fight. You stop. Yeah. You just stop a lot of the burst damage. And if if GGBB decides to turn and say, okay, we need to break this web wrap, then they have to one person right now that can do that. And it would be Zagara. Mm -hmm. She it's it's highly unlikely that Vala is going to be in false melee set. range. And if okay, so false set is a fantastic pickup here for them. So this this changes things a little bit. It makes it so that um, and we have all 10 people have picked, so hopefully we'll be getting into this game as soon as possible. Yeah, we can um, actually just see if everyone's good. Ask the players if they are ready. And uh, as soon as they're ready to go, we're going to give them the GLHF. I was born ready, said Matt Timmy. That's one. I think everybody's good to go. Yeah, they, we have 10 out of 10 players ready. All right, guys, we're hopping on in to game number three of the semifinals here at Kings of the Storm 2. Good luck, have fun, and... You know what? I like I like what you said there about Falstad because that really gives them a little bit more flexibility and a lot of range damage. You have both. You have Vala, you have Falstad, and you have Zagara. So it's three ranged attack assassins that they have here um, to dish out a lot of damage, but still Anubrak, Arthas, Malfurion, a lot of lockdown, a lot of tankiness available. And, I, think, uh, I think with their composition, there really wasn't anyone else that they could have been. Maybe they could have done Rainer. Maybe. Um, but I still... Ah, damn it, Art. Um, maybe they could have done Raynor if they wanted to go for a, a little bit, a tiny bit less bursty, but more single target, because he has Raynor's Raiders and his Raynor, his, his single target damage is... It's, it's, it, it definitely could have worked. It definitely could have worked out for. But him, I for like sure. I like Faulted more because a lot of the fights on this map happen in closed channels, in in very narrow pathways, and Shock and Awe has a lot of value here. I have to say though, that's one of the reasons why I like the new rack pick so much because it's Haunted Minds, and I think he is just a phenomenal pick. The the amount of utility you get out of Burrow Charge is good on every map, but still, just the amount of like narrow lanes you have here where his Q and his E are going to get incredible use. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you at all. I think I think the new pick is a really good idea. Another blind hook trying yep. realizes that they weren't there up top last time, tries it again, does the run back, sees how he's doing. Soldier actually gonna go ahead, go out and see what happens here. I mean, nice job by Zuno just realizing, hey look, we haven't seen probably here in the bottom lane, just throwing down the roaches to scout. Great use of your ability. Never wanna just run in there, because if you step on that bush, you get deleted, that's for sure. Is this, do I see a Seasoned Marksman in this game? I do on Fall's Dead. We have a Seasoned Marksman. I think that might be the first one that I've seen all day. Seasoned Marksman is a talent that you'll see on heroes like Rainer more often than less, but to see it on, on, on Fall's Dead is definitely a little bit less common. Yeah, Fall auto said, attack it's Fall nice on Fall's Dead though because they okay, grant, okay, Arth getting next up here. We'll actually just get absolutely obliterated. The counter engage comes in from SMG. Will they be able to pick this up? We do have Soldier in the front line. He's going to get dropped very low though. He will get stunned and he will lose his life for it. So now we see uh, we see GGBB flipping that back. They they got the initial pick, the counter engage happened, and they said, you know what? No, we're here, we can fight this. And as long as somebody from SMG stays down bottom lane, the experience gap won't be too large. They'll be able to they'll be able to come back from it. But we do have again GGBB leading out the uh, the haunted minds map for for the, uh, the second time. Yeah, and I want to point out once again, they chose to go with the solo lane Falstead. I mean, Dunk has been here in the top by himself. Now we have Stitches here ready for a pick if KO does overstep his ground. And he goes for the hook, but it's not going to happen. And all we'll just see all five enter each side of the mine accordingly. It looks like they're going for Giants Actually, first. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not, I don't necessarily agree with this. Hmm. Um, they're they're they circling could, they around. Okay, they, they, they say, you know what? It. No, no, no. Mine, mine's out to happen right now. Zuna actually gets a sizable chunk of damage dropped onto her, but we'll be able to get back. The engage happens. Arth actually in a... Actually, that's the clone. That's the that's clone. clone. That's the clone. Yes, it happens to the best of us. You saw the health bar dropping down. You got excited, but we're going to see all five of them go in the mines, and they're probably going to wait to turn around here, realizing that they're going to follow in one at a time. Very, very nice hook. Anubrek gets stunned out of his burrow charge and will fall. Amazing play by GGBB. Really just forcing them to come to the mines after them because they have to trickle in slowly but surely and it's working out very well for them getting the first kill here and giving them the opportunity to grab a lot of skulls here in the mine. But honestly, 
Symbiote can't just give up the mines. They're still, they still have all five up. They can't give it up, but do they want to enter in the bottom? I like this play to stick around here, waiting for the hook. Oh, that's super dangerous. Will KO get out? KO, no, he will the not body block by Stitches, who's just a little bit too far away. And uh, this is brilliant play, because it's, it's a long way to go to have to travel back to the top lane and enter the mines safely where you can. And they have no way of knowing that they're just waiting in the bottom for them. Yeah, it's it's really scary. Um, and pretty big props to King Caffeine for his position where he's standing because you can actually see down into the mines from the the top lane. You can see a in little that bit, little area, yes. but where he's standing right now isn't in that visible area. So he can actually wait there, and that is also in hook range. So you see him standing in the light. You, you can see the light coming down right here, and you'll see that that's where you can be uh, can be seen. But it, it, it's not going to matter. They, they cleared 70 skulls, and so you know what? We have 70. Let's go back. Let's stop them from being able to push whatever they're doing down bottom. Um, they did actually end up taking the fort anyways, so that's a thing. I mean, that's a big, that's a, that's a big play. They actually put them in the lead in this match, but that's a big 70 play skull for multiple golem, reasons. I mean, multiple reasons. Okay. Because that, that was the off golem. Ah. That was the off golem for them. So they're, they now have an open lane on bottom where the golem isn't. So they can now have a crazy wide range of pressure if they want to go through it. Now they can just go ahead and get hooked, and uh, Arthur might be in trouble. Yep, Arthur gets out safely there. Um, team wasn't necessarily in position to capitalize on that hook, as King Caffeine was a little bit far forward compared to the rest of his team. Again, we're having the haunted lag of mines um, here. But again, SMG, nice, nice hook goes down. So you get the kill on. Mad Timmy and SMG is going to evacuate the mines here. And then just kind of keep going with the farm here in the top lane. Will the stun get out? Nope. It, the animation started. The animation started from Wither for the stun. Oh, the nice hook on Dreadnought. Burrow Charge will not be able to go off as they got the stun there. Picking up yet another kill. And GGBB, that, that they're not, no longer behind getting those kills, will give them not only their 70 skull golem, but the ability to potentially grab some Merc Camps here on the map. Yeah, uh, that was pretty much exactly what they wanted. I mean, they left the they left the golem down there for bait, and oh lord. Ooh, that was a nice attempt by King Caffeine. <laughs> scary, um, scary but time. But Symbiote knows exactly what's going on here. They know that they want to take another initiation here in the middle of the map while the golems are pushing, and uh, they're going to actually capitalize on their golem push here in the bottom lane. 70 skulls this early in the game is going to do a good amount of damage. Oh, yeah. Um, they'll definitely be able to pressure at least a wall and probably both turrets, and I want to say at least half of the fort's health. The issue that SMG needs to look out for is the hook. I mean, obviously they're always looking for that, but now they have to be super careful. Right? There's no level 10s or anything yet, but if they get hooked here, it's going to be not only a, a fort, but it'll be extra experience, and they can also rotate into the jungle to take giants. And that's actually like a bonus factor of skitches on this map because when you have the Grave Golem pushing you, you can actually hook them into right. the stomp and do the combo with it, effectively giving you a free stomp, a free cool, uh, a stun to do without a cooldown. It's hard to do, but it's definitely something that's in the realm of possibilities, and you can definitely see skitches trying to make that happen. Yeah, it's, uh, if you can get it done, it's amazing. Uh, setting up for it is should be theoretically impossible because enemies have to be standing in there. At least two enemy heroes have to be within melee range to proc a stomp. So it shouldn't happen ever, but it does. It, it does definitely happen. does happen, but it's very unlikely, like yeah. you said, and hard to set up. And of course, we didn't see it there. But I like the call. Just grab the mercs. Right. We, we got enough damage done. I mean, we're even at this point. The game is even on forts. And SMG but, hit level 10. But not SMG. Lit, no. Yeah, GGBB hit level 10 with a full level lead on top of it. Yeah. That's, that's that is the big thing right there. We do have Shock and Awe, we have Divine Soul, we have Ma, we have Gorge, and we have what well, looks like Rain of Vengeance. One thing I want to point out at this point in the game, no one from GGBB has fallen. It's six kills to nil, and that's a really nice thing, giving them that one level advantage. And they're, they can pressure rightfully so with this. And Interesting choice for Dreadnought to actually pressure in the bottom lane. It's soaking experience for GGBB is not trying to get level 10. They, they realize they need their heroics to actually team fight, and uh, that's definitely going to help out quite a bit pushing down the bottom lane with these siege giants. It is an addition because there's no there's no fort down there, so he's only getting lane experience, which while it is good, at the same time it's not the same. It, Absolutely, it, it doesn't do as There's much no fort there pressure. for him to grab. Yeah, there's no objective pressure, and. We nice fruit. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good fruit. 
Um, SMG has to be super careful here. The, the bottom wall is broken, but Stitches is for whatever reason standing up top, so it's not gonna matter. Soldier actually just man moding through here. Right, as soon as they see level 10, they know that Arth is gonna, excuse me, um, Dreadnought is gonna be coming back, so they're falling back here, reali realizing they need to be in optimal positioning. They don't want to get flanked by the Anubarak player, and uh, they're gonna go down into the mines as mines will be spawning in just 20 seconds. And as you can see, we have Army of the Dead, Precision Strike, Tranquility, Odin, and Locust Swarm. So no web wrap. You know, immediately we saw King Caffeine go in the mine and just kind of hang out. Like they wanted to make that happen. The Burrow Charge comes in and it drops three members, making a massive, massive, massive play. But King Caffeine has to fall back here. Chef should be able to try to heal. Throws down the shield ally, falls dead goes down, and once again, I mean, this is two for two, but it's really actually looking better for Symbio at this point in time. They have some pressure. It can be turned around, but really, they need to make sure they're in position, because King Caffeine needs a lot of help. Yeah, so what what Dreadnought did there was, it was really good. It was basically suicidal, but he, he knew it was going to happen. He dove really far into the back line, used that Locust Swarm to put as much pressure down as he could, and ended up getting a kill on Cigar. So he traded one to one, and managed to pressure two people out of a fight. Which allowed his team to, you know, kind of get get in, do their do what they needed to do, and we're we're seeing a lot of like really cute things. That Nova was actually vulnerable to a hook, and Matt Timmy deliberately stood in front of him because he could soak the hook a lot better than Nova could. A lot of just little small things. Both both teams are playing phenomenally in this match. We're seeing two players come out of the mines here to try to make an initiation happen. The Burrow Charge does nothing. The Root does nothing. That's two big cooldowns that you know GGBB might be able to capitalize on, but. Sibio knows that they have their big stuns and their big lockdowns off cooldown, so they need to fall back until they're ready to roll. Right, we do have oh, actually, a nice burrow charge coming with the root. The root follows, and this is going to be two massive he kills. Ult. He still has ult, but it's not going to matter. It, he is going to fall yeah. absolutely here. Yep, even using the Nova Heroic here. Now, what we're going to see happen is GGBB is going to collect as many skulls as they can and just get out. Sigara has overstayed her welcome. Zuna is in a bad spot. KO is going to be blowing her down. Actually, this might go well. Dunk Train comes up to rotate. Zuna's going to get the Mar. Oh my gosh, she's going to get out of this. Never mind. Arclan proves me wrong. This is back and forth, left and right, every direction possible. And Mad Timmy and Arthlon are nearly dead. They're going to take the biceps, and that's a team kill. All five members of GGBB have fallen. What an amazing initiation by Symbiote right there. I, I'm actually speechless. I, I have, oh my gosh, that was I mean, so beautiful. Yeah, the catch up top started everything. It was, it was exactly what they needed. They did what they had to do. They caught the support and the frontline tank. Out of there, so there was no there was no protection for anyone who was down bottom. And while it was a good call from GGBB to pick up as many skulls as they could, at the same time it ended up costing them a couple of lives. So it's uh it's very interesting to see how that played out. The Arthlon made a great call, not going straight in. He he ended up actually flanking as Nova and was able to pick up a uh, two kills effectively, and uh, that that allowed them to swing things back around. Granted, KO did go a little bit too hard on Zagara, right, but, but it didn't matter because Arthlon was there to pick up the slack. So we're all good. And not we have a big initiation here. All members are here to fight at the Golem. They're going for it. Heroic's going down. Dunk Train is trying to back up here. He's a lot of damage that they just lost there for GGBB. Shep is low, trying to get a stun here on Soldier, but Soldier is backing up. Arthas is not easy here to take out. Bicep will fall to the Anubarak. And honestly, it's, it's, it's two for one at this point. GGBB has to back up. They don't have any kind of like any any fightability right now. Zagara is gonna fall and King Caffeine is likely gonna fall. I mean all three of them it could even fall. Shep turning around. Oh, no, probably Shep. not the right choice there. Uh, that's gonna be a second back team wide. To back aces. Before, back to back. before we win in the mines, GGBB was up six kills to none. Six kills to none. You look at the chart now, it's twelve and oh. They turn this around so hard and they've taken a level advantage on GGBB, showing their dominance of knowing when to initiate Incredible I mean, play. Sim Symbiote is just, they're on point when they're in mines. We didn't see it last game, but we're seeing it right now. They are using mines to their absolute maximum, and they're just, they're, they're bringing this game back. They're now ahead, and they are going to be the ones that hit level 16 first. This is a huge change because you have Nova, again, for like the 17th time today. Nova at 16, if she gets there before your team, it's, it's a free hunter's mark, and she's going to obliterate your team. Granted, I know that. Um, Arthalon does like to take Overdrive over Crippling Shot, so we'll see if he actually does take Overdrive. Uh, Overdrive on Nova does help Precision Strike more than um, Crippling Shot does, but we'll, we'll see what happens.
We do see the posturing happening in middle. We're not sure what's going to happen. Caffeine tries for the hook, doesn't actually land on anyone, so no picks happening there. And Symbiote is very, very close to hitting that 16 mark. Will they fight on Knights? Well, it looks like they want to. Symbiote doesn't want to give it up for free. They're coming in here. Dreadnought going in with the Burrow Charge. Throwing down the root. That combination is so strong, followed by the Heroic with Nova. But it's probably not going to be enough here. Oh, actually, I, I'm going to eat my words. Once again, Symbiote's just turning around, throwing down Tranquility, and just giving them the, the unlimited sustain that you get with Tranquility. I mean, it is yeah. such a strong Heroic, and I like just how he waited just long enough that Heroics would not be used, just or any stuns would be used on him, so he can make sure that he can get his Heroic off to his fullest. And for the record, in the middle of that fight, I know that you guys at home can't see it because you don't have the, the talent screen open. In the middle of that fight, as that very first knight died, four members of Symbiote chose their skill in the middle of the fight. Arthlon did go with Overdrive. We do have a rewind on a new rack. So that that level alone allowed them to do a lot of crazy stuff. Like the rewind on a new, the overdrive, oh, it's, it's the massive. overdriven level precision strike huge. that hit three people, that was really key. I mean, I like I like this fight. He's gonna burrow charge hearth. That's a new thing. That's like the new VM out of out of Dreadnought here. Um, we're seeing GGBB coming back up here. They lost their bottom keep. They're gonna push back this golem. Then they have to defend uh, the push back. They don't have to defend the golem here in the top lane. The fort will fall for sure. This golem is not small, but they actually have a mule defending here. Mule defending. The mule actually it does. Yeah, heals up. I know. It's it's it makes the base it's huge. defenses it. Yeah. Such defense, like StarCraft 2. <laughs> I build defense, I build base, and I defense it. Well, we're just going to see this golem get cleaned up here in the top lane, but it's going to do a decent amount of damage because it is, in fact, a 58 skull golem, and SMG has called back to take out this golem. The mule failed his job. The turret fell. Bad mule. <laughs> Bad mule, you're fired. Um, so we're seeing here this golem is not going to be able to take out a tower just quite yet, uh, but the next mines is likely going to determine the outcome of this game. But both teams are funneling into the middle of the map. And we're going to see a contention on the watchtower right here. Okay. A big hook could be what GGBB needs at this point in the game. Let's see. What? Stitches has not chosen a level 16 talent yet. He did choose fishing hook. So a big hook indeed coming out. Um, it, it's, it's interesting because GGBB has had Stitches on this map twice now. And I haven't seen a single point where he tried to use a trap point. Uh, with a hook. Like this. This right is the trap point. Getting the hook on Soldier, not what you want. Rain of Vengeance coming down, followed by the the uh, Shock and Awe. Very, very nicely done, but again, Tranquility has so such good utility, keeping up this tank team alive. Dunk Train barely dodges the root, but Dreadnought says, no, man, he's not going home. And uh, Liquid Chef, once again, kind of overstaying his welcome, and he is actually going to pay for it once again. Yes. So, what that told me right there was that someone on GGBB did not take a look at the talent screen. I because love this. If they did, yeah, they're, they're just going to go straight for court. They just, have, this they is have so 20, symbiote. Yeah, they, this is exactly symbiote. Um, they, Arthas has uh, stone skin, and killing Arthas with stone skin is nigh impossible. That's yeah, it. I mean, that's, that, it, that's, that's it. it. That's a 3-0 convincing victory by Symbiote Gaming. Um, again, these guys have been playing together for a very long time in GGBB. They're a much They're newer brand roster. New. Brand Incredibly new. strong showing from oh, them. Oh, I'm yeah. thoroughly impressed because they actually look, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe twice for the first half of the game on Haunted Minds versus the best team in the world. I mean, they went the entire game for the second game. Well, yeah, that's very true, very true. So... Honestly, I mean, incredibly well played by GGBB. I mean, Chef, Dunk Train, all those guys. I mean, we can see their full roster. It's it's Zuna, Dunk Train, Sean Simon, which is Chef, King Caffeine, and Biceps. Those guys, I mean, just well played. Congrats to them for just a good showing here. Yeah. And um, you know, awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing more out of them. Absolutely. Yeah, I am too. I mean, hopefully we see a lot more of them coming forward. I mean, that that was great. That oh. that's Those are the types of games that I want to see constantly. And I, I hope people pick up little little tips and tricks here and there from what, what they saw here today and maybe we'll see something great happen uh, in the future but that's it's certainly possible and well we've got two more games left tonight and I you know what I don't think I'm gonna have a voice left tomorrow but that's okay Doesn't matter because these games are incredible um, before we hop in we can just look at the bracket now it's not gonna be fully up to date as symbiote did in fact defeat GGBB and they will be advancing to the grand finals here of Kings of the Storm 2 up next, we're going to have Glorious versus Snowflake. We're going to take a quick break to get them all in the lobby, make sure all the players are good to go. And when the match is ready, we will return. So guys, stay tuned. We'll be right back.